Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to Kudobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of the Malamut Rover, which is being made by squad staff member and modder extraordinaire, Rover Dude. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a whole set of new parts to build a lovely series of rovers, which of course are meant to fit in with Rover Dude's overall Umbra Space Industries designs. So this rover fits in very nicely and is compatible with things like the USI modular colonization system, the caribou rover, all of which we have looked at in the past, and this is just the latest continuation of all that, and it is gorgeous. So let's just take a look at the parts in the space plane hangar, and currently this is still a mod in development, I believe this is version 0.1.1, so uh, still in the early days, but right now we have 13 parts for this mod, all of which in this lovely rovers category that Rover Dude has added in, and we will find all the lovely Malamute bits and pieces in here to make uh, just some absolutely gorgeous looking rovers. We're going to start up here with the Malamute Cab, which as as usual is a very high quality part by Rover Dude. Absolutely gorgeous modeling and texturing on this thing. I really, really do love the look of it. It of course has some lovely built-in lighting, which is always nice to see. A beautiful custom interior, which of course we'll take a look at when we're outside. And also is of course a command pod, a minimum of one crew member, but a maximum capacity of two. The lights of course will drain your power as lights tend to do. It has a reaction wheel, the typical crew report and a small battery of about 50 electric charge which is quite nice now the next part that we have in the line here is the malmut cargo bed and here's where things start getting a little bit interesting specifically with attachment points now the malmut cabin you can see has uh, just three basic attachment points there one on the back and then two down at the bottom for attaching these wheels to later on but on this lovely cargo bed, and for many of these other parts, you'll notice we got a we got a crap load more attachment points here, and this starts to come to one of the interesting things about it. Say if we click it right here, it fits nicely in line with the overall cabin. It fits with the feel, and which is quite good if you're wanting to get a more compact rover. But if you want a bit more flair to it, you can go to this attachment point and it adds a shroud piece right here. Now, of course, on the other end, it will do the exact same thing. If we go to there, we get that nice shroud, and these can be turned off. So if you aren't wanting them, though, of course, if you've attached to that point, you're gonna get these nice big open spaces. But it's, a, it's an interesting little feature just to add a little bit of extra, well, I've already said it, but yes, flair to the design of things. And it does look quite cool, though I must admit, I think I prefer it to just flat in line with it, because I do like the orange color here and the crew hatch, you know, just sort of fading in with the orange color of the flatbed. Now you can see on the side here, we also do have battery storage on this thing with quite a bit, 2,000 electric charge in this cargo bed, so uh, you can really go a long way on your rover engines, or well, your wheels, with one of these cargo beds installed. Now, if we move to the next part, we have the Malmut Crew Cabin, which also has a beautiful interior to it, has built-in lights, we've got a lovely little, uh, I guess, mesh thing on top. I guess it's supposed to be like where you could put cargo, but there actually are no attachment points on top, which I think is a missed opportunity. I think some nice little pieces up there would have been good, especially since it is supposed to be the smaller cousin of the caribou. Uh, I think it might be nice to fit some of these storage uh, containers that come with the caribou onto the top of this thing, but oh well, maybe those will come in the future. Uh, but as for the cabin, of course, the lights requiring electric charge, it will hold 2000 electric charge, and can fit four Kerbals on the inside of this thing in a beautiful little interior view. Now the next part we have, I'm gonna skip this one for the time being and go to this other Malmut flatbed. We already saw the other flatbed over there, but this one had walls going up the side. As you can see, if we fit it there, where we have the batteries. This one forgoes that battery storage for a pure flatbed look, so we don't have these walls along the side. But of course, that means that you do lose that extra electrical charge capacity, so you're gonna kinda have to balance. Do you want more cargo space so you can have things like hanging over the edge, or do you want that battery for that extra mileage. 
Overall though, quite nice. And I'm actually going to leave this one here momentarily. And, oh no, 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 we'll come back to this, we'll come back to this. Uh, now let's go back to the Malamut docking module. I just wanted to take a look at that flatbed first. Now this is quite a cool little module. It does fit one crew member on the inside, as you can see right here. And it has a two lovely docking sections on each side of it. But of course, we need to add an actual docking port for it to actually do anything. And this is something quite cool about these. Let us turn it to the side. There we go. So we have the lovely docking port on here now, which I kind of have at the wrong angle, but oh well, c'est la vie. And what's cool about this is the docking port extends. I like that. It's something simple, but I like it. So you can have one of these on your rover and have a docking port on each side. So you can use it to help you with uh, building your initial colonies with using something like the modular colonization system. Or of course, just roll right up next to a caribou rover and dock with it, etc. A very cool looking piece. And overall, I love the design of this thing. Very, very cool indeed. Now the next part we have is the Malamute Geology Lab and this Oh, this I think is my favorite part. Has a beautiful interior view for the lab. It holds two crew members. It does count as a command pod with a minimum of one crew. It has a built-in data transmitter, a scientific experiment, 2000 electric charge, but what's not shown in here, although it does have it in the description, it has a built-in narrow band scanner. So you can find local resources and local ores in your vicinity, which makes sense. It is a geology lab after all, and of course, it has a beautiful, beautiful antenna that extends, which you know me, I'm a sucker for animations like that, and it's just, it's just fun and wonderful and very, very very cool. But yes, that is the geology lab. Let's take a look at the next part here, the Malamute rear airlock. Now this is meant to be the sort of end cap to any of your rovers that you do build. Quite a nice little design, somewhat reminiscent of, say, like the rear end of a Humvee. And it does have a built-in ladder, so you can extend that out and, uh, you know, transfer crew from the front to the back as needed to uh, exit them out the rear. It also does hold one crew member on the inside and can do even a crew report. Overall, very, very nice little part there. A very good extension to the rear end. The next is a Malmut service bay, which has quite a bit of electric charge at 2000, and of course the typical sort of service bay thing that they do. It opens up, you put stuff in it, you're good to go. And, well, that's really all there is to say about that. And then the last two sort of uh, main parts we have, we'll come back to the wheels here momentarily, is the Malmut storage tank. We have a long version and a short version. Now the long version does have, as you can see here, the built-in battery. Uh, the short version does not, but what's more important is that these have a configurable tank. So they use the community resource pack and fuel switcher so that we can switch between different tank setups. And this is good for, you know, taking materials between your different colonies and setups that you have on planet. So you can have it carrying liquid fuel, oxidizer, an electric charge, or, you know, the mono propellant or whatever else you're wanting to send between two different places. Or of course, you can use this as the main body and this doesn't technically have to be a rover. You could build this thing into like a VTOL sort of shuttle and it worked just fine and you have all the liquid fuel and oxidizer you need in the back here. Quite good. And then of course the smaller one is just a, well, smaller, shorter version. But what's more important is down here. Now that we're coming to the wheels, the wheels are quite nice on these things. I do enjoy them. They are pretty, uh, oh god, we actually gotta get them facing the right way. Hold on momentarily like while I figure out, there we go, that's the orientation it's supposed to be. So we have this uh, Malmut mini wheel here, which has a brake torque of three kilonewtons, max speed of 20 meters per second, and will consume 3.5 electric charge. And then this rover wheel has a brake torque of three kilonewtons, a 32 meters per second max speed, and 3.5 electric charge per second on the usage. Oh God, which way do I have to put this thing? I think here. Is that correct? It is. There we are. So two glorious little wheels. I think this one's my favorite just because it's 
bigger, honestly. And one thing you'll notice about the attachment points on the uh, command pod here, we just have the one singular attachment point, and it's the same thing on the rear end. It just has one singular attachment point that you pop right there. Now on any of the interim sort of parts, so any of these uh, cargo beds, the docking module, the geology lab, etc., they actually have three different attachment points on the side, and that's so if you're using the big wheels or even the smaller ones, you know, you can put them in the center one so that they fit quite nicely down the row, but if you're using all small wheels, it actually makes it so you can have two wheels supporting a single section, or you could forego that and just have the one in the center. Now, I quite like having multiple, multiple wheels, so I like to put them with this whenever I use these smaller wheels, but still, quite nice to have that option, so however you're wanting the ship to look and feel, or how much torque you're wanting with all those wheels, you know, you can adjust that as you please, and it's, it's quite a convenient, nice little system. Now this is, uh, you know, all the different parts that we have at the moment, again, this is 0.1.1, .1, and they are absolutely beautiful parts, and actually small enough that you could potentially fit them inside of a Mark III cargo bay, so you could send up a shuttle with a Mark III and then just offload this on a planet somewhere, it would work quite well. And they're just parts that are very, very versatile, you can use them with a lot of different other mods quite easily, but of course they're made to work very well with the other Umbra Space Industries mod. So let's go take a look at what these uh, actually can do outside and how they look. Oh no, I didn't mean to cancel, I meant don't save. And more especially, though, look at the beautiful interiors. Now I've got a whole crap load of little rovers over here. Uh, yeah, sure, let's go to Stumpy first. <laughs> I think that's the weirdest of them. It's just a short little thing that's basically the front end and rear end of the uh, Malmut rover. But here we are, a lovely selection of Malmuts. We have a uh, nice little cargo one here with uh, some nice little liquid fuel in the back. We have Stumpy here, which, yeah, it's just a tiny little thing, which I've discovered in Oddity. If he's only sitting on four wheels, he shakes like this. You can just see him gently vibrating. It's kind of weird, but it's apparently what he does when he's only on four wheels. If you have more than four wheels, and I mean the small ones, as you can see here, the docking Malmut I built, on the four larger wheels, he doesn't seem to shiver, but on the four, he seems unsure of himself. <laughs> but of course, if like, uh, this large lab one over here, you're on, oh god, how many wheels did I give him? One, two, three, four, five, six, twelve wheels! Oh yeah, he's pretty stable and not going anywhere anytime soon. And that, that is just wonderful. I absolutely love all these different rovers. They are pretty cool. But let us actually take a look at the interior. Let's go to the large lab one first, as that has the most of the interiors. Oh, beautiful, it was right there, the next one. Now, of course, I keep forgetting that we have this lovely new internal overlay button since the new release of the game, which is pretty cool. So you can already see here the beautiful design of these from the exterior, but of course it just gets even better when you view it from the inside. Now this is, of course, the main cockpit. Absolutely beautiful little thing. We've got a nice little uh, sippy cup there in the center console. we got the nice... Uh, <laughs> Star Wars homage right there, very, very cool, lots of lovely little bits and bobs, I like all the switches, and just overall a really, really nice cockpit, you got a lot of visibility out of it, very cool. Now of course the other side, just from, you know, same thing, just other side, lovely. Now this is the crew module in the back with all four of our people, got four nice little seats and then just some, uh, some stuff, some stuff in between, I'm not exactly sure what those are supposed to be, but things. And there we go, we'll cycle through these guys, and next, we are in the lab, and I definitely think this is my favorite part, not only because it has the built-in narrowband scanner, built-in transmitter, so you have all your lovely needs, but it's also, by far, I think, my favorite of the interiors. I love the old data reels here, you got a computer over there, if we go to the other Kerbal, got all this stuff, and crayons, and of course, a place for science. It's wonderful. I really, really do like this little thing. And then the last one we have here is uh, the guy in the back portion of the Malmut. Uh, so just like a nice little rear end thing. We have a danger science container because, well, you know, you always got to worry about that dangerous science. And yeah, just a, just a lovely, lovely little thing. Now if we go to 
the uh, the docking rover, we can see the internal view of the docking portion, which uh, should be this one. Yes, there we go. We have the internal docking area. So just the one single seat. We've got a nice little fire extinguisher there and the two docking bits. Overall, a very nice little interior, a very, very good addition. Oh, I'm cycling through when I meant to do that. There we go. But yes, these are the Malmut Rovers. And just a few ideas of some of the stuff you can do with them from a cargo craft right here to our large science vessel. And of course, you could do anything in between or of course mix and match them with other parts. We can extend, we can bring on the scanner UI. So if we had scanned the planet from orbit, of course, we could actually look for ores in our nearby vicinity. And, you know, produce science. Always, always fun. It is just a glorious, glorious mod. And if you would like to try this baby out for yourself, which I would definitely suggest you go and do, you can take a look at the link in the description as always. And yeah, that's uh, that's really all I've got for today, folks. Just a beautiful, beautiful set of rover parts that, quite frankly, anyone should be able to enjoy. And yeah, I hope you all have enjoyed this episode today and that you do come back for the next. But until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one.